So one of the things that I needed in Fusion was the 3D environment because I wanted to relight this room. And for that, there are different ways to do this. Uh, let me just show you the one that I didn't choose, which is fairly exciting though. Uh, I just don't have computing power, even though this computer has uh, 24 GB of RAM, NVIDIA Quadro uh, 2000. But still, it wasn't enough to um, do what I'm just about to show you, but it's fairly exciting. So I remember I said that this values, color values here indicate the point in space, right? The 3D value of that point in space. So Fusion can use this to create the scene here, and, and that's the part that is fairly exciting. Let me just show you what I mean. Let's create an image plane, right? A simple image plane, which is a 3D object um, in, uh, in Fusion. And I'll just uh, scale it up a little bit so you can see. Uh, in fact, let's do 15. All right. So here is the uh, here is the object that I just created. It's at the origin, right? And and you know generally just looking at Synthize and and Maya where this origin exists in our room. Now, how do you make the entire room out of this, right? For that, there is a node called Displays 3D node. So displace 3D node is supposed to give you the displacement as you see it inside the room. This will become very clear very soon. But let me do this first. Let me look at the camera and apply that to the displacement node and create a merge. And this merge, I'll just, I'm going to delete this eventually, but let me just show you where everything is, right? And, and I'm not going to look through this camera I want to see perspective so now you see where the camera is which you kind of roughly knew and where the object is so look at this particular object here as I apply the distortion driven by the color values of this node here so as soon as I do that and one thing I need to do is displace RGB in an absolute sense so that image plane that was here has turned into something like this which doesn't really make a lot of sense I can see that it looks like there is a room here and there is the door here but I, I really can't use this now that's because this object here is divided into 10 subdivisions as I increase the subdivision levels you can see the displacement forming more into a shape that you recognize, right? So at 40, you kind of see that, oh, I see now, uh, I see that there's a sofa here, it looks like there's a table here, there's a TV here, right? But you need much more than that. So at 250, it becomes much more clear. You can see the character blue is walking, you know, and this is all created inside of Fusion. Now what you can do, is take this camera here and apply your uh, backplate. Uh, I'm just going to use this one for now and apply that to the camera. And now there is a projection going on from this camera onto this object, right? So now you can see everything is lit and, and uh, uh, textured properly when you see it through the camera itself, right? You don't even see any difference. You see that, oh, okay, yeah, this is the this is the shot that I, you know, I was looking at earlier. But it's actually just a projection on the uh, 3D object. So now you can imagine that if I wanted to have a light, um, let's create a uh, a spotlight, control space, and create a spotlight and merge this spotlight into merge node which is here so here is the light you can see that this light is actually showing you the object now blue is kind of hidden there because you know i didn't really have a texture of blue inside of the back plate and and this is the reason why i had created the room by itself you know uh when i show you in showed you in maya um but then I ended up replacing it with uh, the one with blue because I just wanted to use the uh, world position pass for other purposes that I'll show you, not for the recreation of the 3D 
uh, shot here. But you can see that as I am moving my uh, my light here, you know, it is actually lining up with the geometry that is displaced. Now, it's not perfectly lined up because we are dividing this image plane into 250. Let's divide this into 500. Now it's much tighter and much better, right? You can see that the light is now defining the object, uh, you know, and the light is actually showing you the, uh, the, the part of, the, you can see the sofa here, right? Uh, and you can see, you know, this part here uh, of the window, right? A very powerful way of uh, working inside of Fusion based on the 2D image, and, and that's the exciting part, that it's nothing more than just a 2D image, you know, it's uh, color values, right? But it's driving the whole 3D environment inside of Fusion to give you displacement that is matching your room. The problem, for me anyway, using my computing power, or limitation of my computing power, is that um, you need to have a lot of points here. In theory, this shot is um, 1280 by 720, right? So if multiply that, that's the number of pixels that you have in the shot, and that's the number of points that you need here to have the accurate representation of the uh, of the geometry. And that is a lot of subdivision. Your machine is gonna, my machine is gonna crawl anyway. So this, while an exciting way of looking at 3D, this wasn't a viable option for me. So I didn't choose to go this route with World Position Pass. Uh, let me just delete all the nodes that we don't need here, and I'll walk you through what I ended up doing, which is also uh, equally exciting. So what I did is, instead, I brought an FBX file from Maya itself. I need to run this off here so you can see the FBX file. So this is the geometry that was created inside of uh, uh, Maya. And we walked through that. And this is exactly the same uh, geometry that you see here as an FBX file. So now you have the entire room here, uh, a much more defined uh, geometry uh, at a very um, manageable level of subdivision. I, you know, I don't even know if there is actually a way to look at subdivision in FBX, but you don't have to put through all those points, you know, to uh, to really uh, have this, you know, fine edges. Now let's look at this into the scene here. Let's look at this from your camera. Connect this so you can see the texture. So now you see that you have a, and, and I'll go back to the uh, perspective so you can I can show you, you know what you're looking at. This is exactly the same room that you were just looking at without the check texture. Now you have the projected texture on it, right? The same way that we looked at projection earlier, and you have the lights, you know, exactly the same way that you saw the lights in the uh, other way, you know, using the one position pass. So now you can change this light, you know, move it anywhere and it will respect, you know, what you have in mind uh, in terms of, you know, where should light look at, you know, in terms of uh, your, uh, your geometry. And you can see that these doorknobs here, you know, even they show the specular you know, uh, values as soon as you move the light on that. And that's because of the geometry that we created inside of Maya. Okay, so I'm running out of time here. So I'll continue in the next uh, video. And we'll just continue from here. Thanks a lot.